Hello everyone and welcome to, I don't need these on, um, welcome to the Minimising Hunger Seminar or webinar, whatever. Um, today we're going to be going over how to minimise hunger, how to maximise our fat loss phase with minimising hunger, um, but obviously with hunger being the main reason people will be like, maybe go off plan because they've too, become too hungry, they start craving things um, and they want to eat it and they end up going over their calories. So we're going to go over reasons why you might be feeling this way, what I'd recommend, how to avoid it, and my top eight reasons why. So go straight into it. Uh, lower calorie density foods. So basically a better bang for your buck for what you're actually eating. So more voluminous foods is gonna keep you more satiated because you're eating a larger amount of quantity of that food. So for example, having uh, a cheeseburger and eating all your calories via a cheeseburger or having chicken breast and veg, you're gonna be able to have a whole lot of chicken breast and veg rather than a cheeseburger with your daily consumption. That is pretty much how it works. Um, when you see all these influencers that may be having these really cool, tasty foods, it's because they've come so super disciplined with the amount that they can have, they can make it work within their budget, or they've calorie banked for that particular day and make it look like it's that's what they have every day, but that's probably what they're having one, one day a week with everything else being super low. So that's how people are maybe mimicking these super tasty foods um, and not really putting on any weight um, or if they're losing body weight. So don't believe everything you see. Um, higher volume foods are gonna keep you fuller for longer, um, but within reason, um, that's what I would do to minimize hunger. Number two, higher protein or an optimal protein intake. Um, if you're getting one-to-one -one coaching from me, obviously your protein will be set on your macros, but if you're not, um, setting your protein intake so you're feeling fuller for longer. Um, another another aspect is making sure that we are having whole food protein sources as well, as long as well as our protein, uh, maybe protein powders or protein you know supplements, um, bars, puddings. If we choose a whole food uh, a whole food approach you're gonna also get a better bang for your buck for the amount of volume of protein that you're consuming. Um, not eating when not hungry. So another aspect is if you're not hungry in the morning, don't eat in the morning. <laughs> People, it's not some magic, um, some magic aspect of it, or it's not, it's not complete science or anything like that. It's if you're not hungry in the morning, you don't have to eat in the morning, maybe saving it, um, saving your calories to the back end of the day if you want to have a bigger meal and you have your cravings in the evening is making sure that you have some so you're not come to the end of the day and you think, oh my God, I am absolutely, absolutely starving. I could eat anything. And then you're going to go off plan because you're feeling super hungry. So we're trying to minimize that by making sure that we have, a, um, have some calories for the evening um, and then having a lower calorie breakfast if you're not hungry in the morning. For me, I'm the complete opposite. So I like having a big breakfast and then having a lighter dinner, but that's not for everyone. So, um, yeah, moving on. Higher fiber, um, within reason. So we don't want to have it. So it's, you're completely, you know, completely, completely bunged up, but you'll want to be, um, you're going to have some fiber intake. So it slows down digestion. So that's why oats is quite a good carbohydrate source because it's high in fiber as well and it has a slow release um, carbohydrate it's actually quite, yeah for every um for every 10 grams it's one gram of fiber so if you have 100 100 grams that's 10 grams of fiber with within oats um also green veg always high in fiber um and vegetables in general fruits they have a compared to say juices, but then they take the fiber out is with the whole food sources and you're consuming and eating it, berries, fruits, vegetables, and you're consuming it, um, not through liquid calories, you're gonna have um, a slower digestion of that food and the foods around it as well. So you're gonna feel fuller for longer. 
Um, no liquid calories, so easily done. Um, coffees, teas, um, juices, s s pops and sodas or whatever. Um, there, if you're not choosing, if you're drinking liquid calories, it's from in for within reason. You're kind of like wasting calories, in my opinion, um, just because it's not going to satiate you all. It's super fast digesting. It's not really food. It's a drink, and it's kind of just wasting calories. Um, especially if you're in a fat loss phase, you're trying to minimize liquid calories as much as possible. Um, it's just because then you can consume your food, and it's going to keep you a lot fuller. So I've, I've never really in a fat loss phase drink any calories. Um, obviously, within reason, you can have diet drinks and things that are low low calorie drinks. It's just minimizing higher calorie drinks is going to be very important. Um, drinking plenty of water before you eat and slowly eating down. Um, yeah, you get within when you're having your main meals, having water with it with that meal, um, is going to help the digestion of the food itself, and it's also going to make you feel fuller. There's also some research that suggests that having it takes a while for the signal of your food from your stomach to your head to say that you're full. So, like you see it with bodybuilders a lot when they use like t tiny spoons to eat their food um, that's like there is actually some science alongside that um, that's saying that because they're taking longer to eat their food um, and they're chewing their food more because they're taking smaller bites as well it's actually taking longer for the signal for the stomach to go to the brain to say that you're full um, so actually there is some science behind it um, so that is something that you could implement. I don't really use that that much. I'm more with the other, the other ones. But it is there's some there's some um, science behind having that. Um, higher caffeine, so coffees, pre workouts. They, they suppress they suppress appetite, um, and it's probably something that you're going to need at the back end of a fat loss phase because you're going to be super hungry. So. Um, and you're going to have no, not a lot of energy because you're in a deficit, so you're consuming less food than you need to regulate um, the exercise, and that's why you lose weight. So that's why when you're in a deficit, you lose weight because you're not having as much energy as you need. So you're going to have some drop-off of energy, especially if it's up to 10 weeks, potentially. Um, that 7, 8, and 9, and 10... Um, you're gonna start feeling a little bit lethargic. It, that's to be expected. Um, so that's when you start having a higher caffeine dose. Um, but with that, that's why at the beginning of the fat loss phase, you don't really wanna be having a whole lot. And then you can start using, lose, utilizing that tool going forward at the back end. And then trigger foods and reducing, reducing trigger foods or high palatability foods. So foods that are basically super awesome. Um, <laughs> super tasty, too tasty. Um, you try and avoid those trigger foods as much as you can, um, or reduce it or have if super control. In my opinion, there's kind of two people. There's the people that can have a little bit every single day and they can be super disciplined with it. Or there's the people that have super easily trigger foods and as soon as they have a little bit, they eat the whole, they eat the whole packet or the whole tub. For me, I am person number B. So that's why I generally stick to whole foods all the time um, and try and avoid or reduce or eliminate those foods um, just because I find it easier that way. I have tried things in the past and then I end up thinking this is this can turn it, this is turning into a trigger food. So I will try things depending on what it is. Um, yeah, I'm not perfect as well. I will have... I mean, sometimes I will go over my calories, I will overindulge. Um, but what I find out that is if I would just reduce my cal, if I reduce it or eliminate it, depending on the food source itself, it's kind of a little bit of trial and error of what trigger foods are for me. And that will be the same for you. So it will be just like experimenting. Um, people go like point the finger and think they've done absolutely disappointing themselves when they end up having a little bit too much but it is it's a trial and error of what works for you 
um, and what foods are highly palatable for you. So some foods th that you can slowly like kind of um, have a little bit of, but not and not be a trigger food and keep that within your diet would be preferential. But it's for some people, trigger foods, they just have a little bit of it and they end up wanting the whole tub. Um, so it's kind of a little bit of trial and error with um, going forward, what works for you. Um, and as you get better at the fat loss, the skill of fat loss, um, you'll become more disciplined um, and you'll be able to know what you find easier um, to be more disciplined with. For me, uh, when I first did one of my first fat loss phases, I can have bagels, but now I can have, this is just an example, I can have bagels now within within my diet and have a little bit of it and, and not really be, and not be a trigger for me anymore. So that's just something to take forward going forward. Um, so yeah, these are my eight hunger reduction strategies. Um, so let me know what you think. Like implement them. If you need any more help from me, drop me a message and I'll have have a great rest of the day and I will speak to you soon.